Hello fellow testers and welcome to this Cumetry tutorial video. My name is Kathy and in this video I'll be walking you through test authoring in Cumetry test management. We'll be going over creating and managing test cases, also creating and managing requirements, and then last but not least, linking our test cases with our requirements. Now without further ado, let's get started with test authoring. Now to give you a little crash course about test cases and requirements, test cases are basically a procedural increment in your testing that have test steps. So you would specify those test steps in your test cases. On the other hand, requirements, also known as stories, these are bundles of test cases that will help you to reach a testing objective. All right, so let's get started with creating and managing our test cases. Through this entire video series, I'll be carrying you through our tutorials using our example project, which is called Fit Tracker. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go to the test cases module. And I'm going to give you a little tour. So on the left hand side, you'll find the folder explorer. In this folder explorer, you can organize your test cases in a logical manner. What you can do in the folder explorer is also sort the folders and you can also have other options such as hiding the empty folders or move and copy them into one another. Now if you wanted to add a new folder into your folder structure, please make sure to select a parent folder and then go on over to this plus button and go ahead and create folder. This is where you would specify the folder name and also a description for this folder if you wish and you would go ahead and hit create. In this case, I'm not going to create a new folder, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel. So this takes us back to our test case module. Now, if you wanted to edit or delete a folder, there's an option to do that. How you would do that is clicking this edit button. This is where you can modify your description or even your name for your folder and just update. You can also delete the folder from here. Or you can also go back to the test case module and delete the test case folder using this delete icon. Now please note that if you wanted to delete an entire test case folder, all of the test cases inside that folder will also be deleted as well. Now on the right hand side here, you'll find yourself in the backlog. Um, because I clicked on the root folder, this is going to take us to all of the test cases inside of our Fit Tracker project. Now you see that there's a lot of different test cases we have. So if you wanted to sort your test cases in ascending and descending order, that's an option through the top bar here. You can also find specific test cases using our filter option in which we supply a lot of different fields to sort your test cases by. Now, if you wanted to see a little bit more information about each individual test case from this window, you can just click the gear button on any of these test cases and you can show more. This will expand one test case such that it'll show a few other fields. You can also move or copy this test case by selecting the gear icon and clicking move or copy and then selecting the folder in which you want to move or copy this test case to. Now to view more information about every test case inside of the list you have here, you can go to the gear button on the top bar and show more info, and this will expand every single test case you have in your backlog. So now that we know how to navigate ourselves around this page, let's go ahead and create a new test case. You're going to do that by clicking this add button and create test case. Now this page is where you're going to fill in information about your new test case. This will include information such as the summary, which is also the title for your new test case. Then you can choose the priority, the labels that you want to specify this test case by, the owner in which you want to assign this test case to, and the workflow status that this test case is on. You can also associate releases and cycles to this test case and choose a testing category. In this estimated time field is where a tester would specify their estimated amount of time they think that this test case will take to execute. Now, in future iterations, a tester can come back to this value and edit it such that it becomes a more accurate estimation of the test execution time. 
Below this, we also have an option for you to provide a description, and this enables smart text capabilities. We have a user defined field section. Now, if you're interested in creating custom fields and managing them, you can click on the link on the screen right now and we'll redirect you to that video to teach you how. Now, at the bottom of the page is where we're going to add test steps to our test case. So, in this case, let's say I want to add three test steps, and all I have to do is click on the text box and just enter in my information. So, for my first step, the description is step one. I want to add an expected outcome and also some input data. Now to add a new step, I'm just going to click this button and go ahead and just keep entering my information in the text boxes. For each text box, you can expand and contract these so that you can show more information if you have an extensive step description. Now I'm going to continue adding in for information. Okay, so let's say that step three is basically going to look very similar to step one and step two. What I can do is I can click on this gear icon and just duplicate a row. This is basically cloning it so that I don't have to go back and retype every test step from scratch. Now we have other options to reorder your test steps in case you messed up and didn't create them in order, so we can just click on this gear icon and be able to see that you can add a row from here, you can remove this row, say if you want to duplicate a row like I did earlier, I want to move up or down in the row list. Now this is a little covered, but there's also an option to shift to bottom and there's also an option to shift your test step to the top. So now that I'm done creating my test steps, this completes my test case and I can just go ahead and hit create to add this to my backlog. However, since I have so many test cases, I'm not going to add it. I'm just going to go ahead and open one up for you to see what contents are available for you to view. So let's say I wanted to go to this test case. And inside you can see at the top we have our summary of the test case. We also see that this test case is located in the path folder fit tracker slash UI folder. On the right hand side here, we have our version drop down list. So you can basically toggle through different versions of your test case. This is useful for if you wanted to version control your test cases and even roll back to previous versions of your test case in case there's specific test steps inside them that you'd like to use. Now below that we have other details about our test case and I want to point out that this testing type for the test case is manual. In the case you're interested in our automated test cases, you can go ahead and click the screen right now and it'll take you to our automation video. Moving on down, we have other information that was previously specified and then we have our test steps at the very bottom. Now there are other tabs of information such as Attachments. This is where you can attach a file to your test case for later reference. You can also link and unlink specific requirements to your test case. So in the tab right now, you see that we have one requirement already linked to the test case. In the case I wanted to link more requirements, I can go ahead and click this button here. And inside here, we have the filter option available for you to search through for uh, your specific requirements. You can also do the same sorting as I mentioned earlier. If you wanted to link multiple requirements to your test case, we have an option to bulk link. And then at the same time, we can also choose different versions of our requirements. So say that I wanted to choose you know, version one of this requirement, I have the option to change that and link this to my test case. Now, if I wanted to unlink any of my requirements, I can go back to my tab and just select whichever ones that I want to unlink. Again, we also support bulk unlinking. You can just go ahead and select which ones and hit unlink selected.
Next, in the test executions tab, this is where you can find out which test executions that this test case has come up in. And you have a list of those executions on the left. We also have a column of the test execution statuses for each of these test runs and also the platform on which these test executions were performed. To link additional test suites, you can click this button and find which ones you want to link to this test case. In the Issues tab, this is where you can find out which bugs or defects that are associated with this test case. In your Associated Release and Cycles tab, this is where you can unscope and rescope your test case to specific releases and cycles of your project. Now also notice that we can use version control on these associations. And the reason being that as you move through your sprints, sometimes you'll be updating your test cases with new test steps or any sort of other modification. You have the ability to say for a specific sprint in your project that you want to associate a specific version of your test case with it. In the version tab, you'll find a little log of the different versions that we made of this test case. And in the change log tab, you'll also find information about who changed what inside of this test case. Now, if you have the appropriate permissions to edit or delete these test cases, you can do that right here. You can edit this test case and also its fields. If you want to update it as a new version, then you have the choice to save as new version, or you can just update without changing the version. If you wanted to delete the test case, you can do that from the edit window, or you can even go to the test case window itself and delete it here. Now let's say you want to make changes to multiple test cases or even delete multiple test cases. We have a bulk operation option which you can go back to the test case module with. And in this gear icon, you can just click on bulk operation and you choose whether or not you want to edit or delete your test cases. In this case, let's say I wanted to edit my test cases and let's go ahead and click next. And here again, I can filter and sort for different test cases. And also the most important part is I can bulk select specific test cases. And once I'm done choosing the test cases I want to edit, then I'll click Next and just kind of go modify specific um, fields inside of the test case. And let's say I want to save all of these selected test cases. Now you can either do that um, and save as a new version for each test case, or you can update the test cases without saving them as new versions. Okay, so now that we know how to create and manage our test cases, we're going to move on to creating and managing our requirements. So let's head on over to the requirements module. Now, as you can see, our requirements module looks a lot like our test case module and layout. Again, you can create folders, edit, delete them. You can also sort and filter through your requirement list here. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new requirement just to show you what you can customize. So in here again, you'll be creating a new requirement with a new summary. You can also uh, choose the settings for this requirement. You have the description that you can use smart text with. Again, there's user defined fields that you can specify for each module. So you can customize that here. Now, when you're done, you just go ahead and hit create and this will save the new requirement into your list. Again, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you how one of the requirements looks. Now in Qmetry, there's two different kinds of requirements. The first kind is any sort of story or requirement that's synced from an external tracker, such as Jira. And the second type of requirement is one that's created manually inside of Qmetry. So let's go through the first type of requirement. How you know that a requirement is synced from an external tracker such as JIRA is that you would go to the external ID column inside of the backlog and you can basically look through and see if any of your requirements have an external ID. If it does, this means that it's been synced from an external tracker. So let's go ahead and look inside. Again, you'll have the summary, the path folder, and the version control for the requirement itself and also a few details included with these fields below. This will also include the issues that your requirement is linked to and also the number of test cases that this requirement is also linked to. 
The next section is integration. So this is where we'll see which external tracker your project is externally linked to. We'll also see the external project that's linked and also an external key. Now, this external key will provide a link for you to be able to view this same requirement inside of your external tracker. Moving on down, we also have other information about the requirement itself. And we have tabs where you can view the attachments for which you want to associate with this requirement. We have test cases in which this requirement is linked to. And of course, you can link and unlink your test cases from this tab as well. Your issues tab will include the issues that this requirement is associated with, and you can also unlink and link specific bugs to it. In the associated release and cycles tab, this is where you can again scope your requirement to a specific release or cycle of your project. You can also use version control in case you would like to specify a specific version of requirement to link. We also have a version tab in which you can track the versions of this requirement and also a detailed change log, which is a paper trail of any modifications that were made to this requirement. Now in Qmetry, we consider requirement syncing to be unidirectional. This means that we basically only allow external trackers to sync one way into Qmetry. And in this way, changes to a requirement can only be made in the external tracker and not inside of Qmetry. So for that reason, we do not have a edit button. So for that reason, we do not have an edit button in the synced requirements. However, we can delete them. So I know that this requirement is linked from an external tracker. Now going back to the requirements module, if I find that a requirement does not have an external ID linked to it, then this means that this requirement was created manually. So because this requirement was created manually inside of Qmetry, we're able to edit and also delete this requirement. If you wanted to make changes to or delete multiple requirements, again, we have the bulk operation option. So let's go into it and we go choose whether we want to edit the requirements or delete them. In this case, I'm going to edit them. So let's move on to the next step. And this is where you can again bulk select whichever requirements you like. We have the sorting and filtering options available for you to find your requirements. And I'm going to unselect the first one because since this is externally linked, I shouldn't be able to make changes to this requirement. And again, this is where you would go through the fields of your requirements and make any changes if you want. Let's say I want to change the status to open for all of the requirements I just selected. And I can choose to save all of the requirements as new versions of themselves, or I can update them without saving them as new versions. My friends, I hope this video was helpful for you. To view any additional topics, please check out the rest of our Qmetry test management video series. Thanks for walking with me through test authoring and happy testing.